Well, here we go. We are starting the last section of Chapter 6. And in this chapter, we are going to improve our skills of being able to separate some of those tough differential equations. And then once we've improved that, you will notice we are able to solve some exponential change problems using our calculus skills. Very fun. So let's take a look at this. Well, we know that if we have a differential equation, so here's an example of a differential equation, change in y over change in x, is equal to a product of two terms. Well, at this point, it's been very simple to solve, separate differential equations because up to this point, all of our differential equations have been explicit functions, something like this. And then we just separate, we multiply by dx, and we get 3x dx. Well, really nice. But what happens if it's not explicit? What if it is an implicit? That means the x's and y's are kind of mixed up. What do we do then? Well, basically what we will do is we will divide out the y term and put it with the change in y and remain the x term with change in x. Well, let's look at an example. So here we go. We have the change of y over the change of x is equal to the product of x squared y squared. And we are given a specific condition, initial condition actually. We will use that once we have separate, integrate, add a c. Okay? So let us first separate. Well, we see here that we're going to need to divide both sides by y squared. So I get 1 over y squared dy. And then we multiply by dx, x squared dx. So we've done the first step, separate. Now we must integrate. Make sure that you show this step of integration. Don't be lazy, okay? Because you need those steps. You need your work. And now if we integrate, this is y to the negative 2. So if I add 1, I get y to the negative 1 divided by a negative 1. Now it is plus c, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the c to the left side. So it doesn't matter if you have a constant added to both sides. You still have a constant. Okay, so here's my plus c. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit, so I have negative y to the negative 1 is equal to x cubed over 3 plus c. So you see at this point, I separate, integrate, integrate, add a c. Now before I go any further, I'm going to solve for that value of c. So using the given information, when y is 3, so I have basically negative 1 third equals to x is 0. So that's 0 cubed over 3 plus c. So we can see that our constant is going to be negative one-third. So we go and plug that back into the original equation. So I have negative one over y is equal to x cubed over three, and the constant is a negative one-third. Great. Now we need to solve in terms of y, so I multiply everything by a negative. So I have one over y is equal to negative x cubed over three plus one all over three. Great. And last of all, take the reciprocal of both sides. So my solution is negative, oh, excuse me, I almost forgot to take the reciprocal. 3 is 3 over negative x cubed plus 1. This is the function that will give us, when I take the derivative of it, is the original problem at that point. Let's do another example here. So again, I have a differential equation given a condition. So in order to solve for y, we have to, sep we have to separate first. So I'm going to have 1 over y plus 1 dy is equal to 2x plus 1 dx. And then we're going to integrate both sides. Integrate, integrate. And the integral, integral sorry, of 1 over y, we know that to be the natural log, right? The natural log of the expression. So we'll have the natural log of y plus 1. Now it would be plus c, but I'm just going to add that to one side. Equals x squared plus x plus c. Okay, x squared plus x plus c. Perfect. Now at this point, I've separate, integrate, integrate, add a c. So now I'm going to solve for the value of c. Don't go any further. Get c first. So it's the natural log, and then y is 1, so it's 1 plus 1 is equal to x squared is a negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus c. So we can see then we're left with the natural log of the absolute value of 2, which is 2, is equal to c. Okay, so let us go back and put that into the original problem here now. Um, so we have the natural log of the absolute value of y plus 1 is equal to x squared plus x plus the natural log of 2. Great. Now we must solve 
over y. And you can see I'm going to have to use my skills of ex exponents here because I need to undo natural log. And we know to undo natural log, we raise each side to a power of e, okay? Power of e, okay? And so the e and the natural log are inverse operations, so they undo each other. So I'm left with the absolute value of y plus 1 is equal to e to the x squared plus x plus the natural log of 2. Now I'm going to use my rules of um, powers here. So the absolute value of y plus 1, if it's addition, that one means if the bases are the same, it's the same as multiplication. Now I do this because I can see then I've got something special going on at the end there. Because we know that e raised to the natural log of 2 is just the constant 2. Great. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit, y plus 1. Now I can put this back into exponential form, because if the base is the same, you add the exponents in multiplication. Very good. Now you notice that I no longer have the absolute value symbol here. Why is that? Well, this is an um, exponential function to the base e, and we know that exponential functions look like that. Now look at the y values of the exponential function. The y values are positive. So since the y values would be positive, um, we don't need the absolute value because it will be guaranteed to be positive. Okay? So now, finishing this off, I have 2e to the x squared plus x subtracted 1. There is my function given the derivative and initial condition. Um, let's do one more. I'll kind of go through this quickly. So um, hopefully you can follow my integration. So I have dy dx equals the product of x tends to square root of y. So I'm going to divide by the square root of y, separate, and then I'm going to integrate both sides. Make sure you show it. Okay, the integral of 1 over the square root of y is basically y to the negative 1 half. So I'll add 1, so I get y to the positive 1 half, divided by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2, is equal to x squared over 2 plus c. Okay? Now it's at this point again that you substitute your values of x and y to find the constant c. This is nice because I get 2 times um, 25 to 1 half power is equal to 3 squared over 2 plus c. So the square root of 25 is 5 times 2 is 10. So I have 10 equals 9 halves plus c. Is that correct? Yes. Then I subtract 9 halves. So 20 halves minus 9 halves is 11 halves. Fantastic. So let's go back now and substitute that value in. So I have 2y to the 1 half is equal to x squared over 2 plus 11 halves. Okay, so solving for y, I divide by 2. So I get y to the 1 half is equal to x squared plus 11 divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half over 4. And then I'm going to square both sides. So I get y is equal to x squared plus 11 over 4 squared. And I can leave it in that form. Fantastic. Great. Now we have just practiced a little bit more of separating and integrating our differential functions. Now to go to the next slide. I thought I went to the next slide. I'm having little issues with my arrows here. I don't think it can read it. There we go. Now, we can apply this to exponential growth problems. A phrase that is extremely important that you just got to know is this sentence here. The rate of change. Now, we know that phrase to mean a derivative, right? The change in y in respect to another value. Now, for exponential change, typically all of our application problems are in respect to time. So the rate of change is, now it's proportional to the amount present, okay? Proportional is a ratio, right? It's multiplying by a ratio. We call this direct variation. So it's proportional to some constant times the amount that is present, y, okay? So the change in my value y in respect to time is equal to a constant times the value. That is a definition of proportionality. Now, here we know that k is the growth constant, if positive. But if k is negative, it's decay. And we kind of talked about this in an Algebra 2 course. So looking at some ample examples, 
So doesn't it make sense that the more bacteria you have in the dish, so that's what represents your constant K, it's growing by a constant K, then the faster they multiply, the rate of change. The more radioactive material present, the faster it decays. The greater your bank account, the faster it grows. Okay, so this is looking at the rate of change in respect to your proportional amount that you're growing by. Now, how does this relate to calculus? Well, in calculus, we will look at examples where we are told we have a rate of change equal to k times y. But, ah, uh, how can I solve for y? I want to know the value y. Well, voila, we can use our integral. So let's say that we're given this function, and we know to solve, we would separate the variables. So we would divide by y, so we get 1 over y is times the change in y is equal to the sum constant times the change in t. Now we're going to integrate both sides. So integrate, integrate. And the integral of 1 over y is the natural log of y. The integral of a constant k is k times a variable t plus c. Okay? So to solve for y, we, t we raise each side to the e power, e, e. So I get e to the natural log of y and the e and the natural log undo each other. So I have the absolute value of y is equal to e times kt plus c. Now, we can use our rules of exponents to separate that. So we have e to the c times e to the kt. Well, e to the c is just some constant, right? And so absolute value indicates that it was, the definition is that you have a positive or a negative value. So we have a positive or negative value of e to the c, e to the kt. Well, this e to the c, again, is just some constant, right? It's 2.1 something raised to a power. And a lot of times referred to that as capital A, or you re see this referred to as y to the 0, e to the kt, where a and y to the 0 is the initial amount present in your exponential growth problem. Do you recognize this from um, Algebra 2, where you would go y equals... Um, your initial amount, whether it's y sub 0, and then it would be, you know, your rate raised to the time, something like that. But here we're using e as the base because it's growing continuously. So, law of exponential change. If you see this phrase where you have changing at a rate proportional to the amount present, then you know that it is the rate of change is proportional to k times t, and we just proved that that is the same as the y value equal to initial amount e to the kt. Okay? Very important. You need to know this. Now, if you forget this formula, we can always derive it again by separating integrate, integrate, add a c, right? But sometimes it's nice not to have to prove everything every single time. Great. Now, we will actually go through some exponential growth problem in the next lesson. So that's it for now.